roughing a part is sometimes overlooked and thought of as a very easy thing. We just rough out the part. People tend to concentrate on the finishing because that's what you see in the finished part. But the way you rough something can have such an impact on the finish that you actually have on there. It's a really important thing to get right. So I'm going to talk you through now doing your first roughing strategies. We're going to do a 2D adaptive on the outside and a 3D adaptive on the inside. Mm -hmm. So let's just jump into it and I want you to fire questions at me as yeah. we go. So let's go 2D adaptive. And then let's choose the silhouette. Oh, first of all, our tool, look there, it's used our face more from before. So let's choose our 16 millimeter end mill. Perfect. Let's do a silhouette of the outside. Put our geometry tab. Let's go a silhouette. Perfect. You can press OK on there. So my geometry tab essentially gives me ways to control where the toolpath is going yeah, to act Yeah, exactly. On the path. A 2D toolpath, you're choosing what you want to machine. Yeah. Now on our heights tab, I want you to do the bottom height. I want you to go model bottom minus another millimetre. So what this is going to do is basically cut a little bit more than what it needs to, which is going to help us then in our second operation when we come to basically do our, our, our cutting, we've actually overcut slightly, which means we're not going to have a big burr around the outside or a big fin of material that we could potentially have. Right so, okay, let's go into our passes tab now. Optimal load is a bit high at 6.4. Because we're going to be using the full flutes of the cutter, we're going to probably want to drop that down a bit. So let's go down to about 2.5 millimeters. Okay, and what exactly does this optimal mode refer to? Okay, so the optimal load here, some people can think of it as step over, yeah. how far the cutter is stepping over into the material. Mm -hmm. But the way our adaptive strategies work, we refer to it as load because we need to look at how it's going into sharp corners rather than just the step over, um, as, as simply as that. And I'll stop to leave now Radially, let's leave half a millimetre on so we can do a finishing pass. But actually, because this is just on the outside of our part, let's set that to zero. Perfect. Let's press OK and see what happens. Sounds good. That's and the brilliant. goal here in general with the roughing is just to be removing material as quickly and efficiently as possible. Is that correct? Yeah, exactly. We've now made that tool path. Can you spot any problems? Um, Talk to me about them. Okay, so interesting you can't spot the problem there. You see the big top hat that you've got on the top of your part? Yeah. That's basically saying you're not going to be machining that. That's a big problem. Mm -hmm. If you were to simulate this now, you'd see a collision that the shank is actually, is actually colliding with the material because there's not enough flutes. So we can now see we haven't got enough flute length to fully machine this in one go. So let's go back and edit this toolpath. Go into our passes tab. And then let's go multiple depths. Got it. So we can start doing lots of calculations here of our part is 75 millimeters tall. Let's go exactly half with our little bit extra. Let's just leave that at 40 millimeters. It's going to be good enough for now. Hit OK. And you can now see two passes for yeah. our roughing. And this okay. is interesting. So by default, the full length of the tool is, is used in a single depth when I use this well, strategy. By default, multiple depths is off. So it's just going to go straight yeah. to the bottom and go around. You could have collisions there exactly like we did. Yeah. So you can set your defaults to different things. Um, but yeah, by default, multiple depths is yeah. off in a 2D strategy. And that's because that is the ideal situation, right? We just come yeah. in with that tool and we take the material. Yeah, I mean, away. ideally, we'd want a slightly longer end mill. We just haven't got one. And let's now go for a 3D adaptive roughing strategy for the two middle pockets. So I want you to go to the geometry tab. And now rather than choosing what to machine, let's choose some boundaries. So what not to machine outside of. So in our machining boundary, let's go to a selection. And let's choose the top of these two big pockets. That's it, that one and the other one. We go there. Perfect. Let's go on to our passes tab now. And again, our optimal load, let's go two and a half millimeters. And we've already got our step down now selected. Because it's a 3D path, we're doing step downs as well. Mm -hmm. And our stock to leave, before, do you remember we set the zero for actual stock to leave? 
We want to leave that at 0.5 because we have got a floor got in it. this part. Yeah. Whereas before it was just the outside of the part. So yeah. the depth of it, we wanted to go as low as we low as we could. Let's just hit OK and see what we get. Have you ever come across the term adaptive roughing before? So, I mean, I know it from the name of the tool path, okay. um, but yeah, tell me more about it. Interesting, okay. So, this is our emerald that we're going to be using. We have a big flute length on here. We go back a few years and traditionally we'd have been using tools that look a little bit like this. This is an inserted cutter. We've got inserts there on the tip. What this allows to do is do a very small step down, but a very large step over. You know, that's what we call sort of traditional pocket roughing, where we're doing that. Whereas now, on certain materials like aluminium that we're machining today, it's actually far more productive to do a bigger step down and a smaller step over. And that's what adaptive really is doing. It normally reduces load on the spindle and also you can move it in a bit quicker. Let's rotate this ever so slightly. So can you see that the red helix moves? I can, yeah. So what that's doing, that's helixing this tool down, all the way down, and then going to rough out that we go from there. It's possible. We're definitely going to be doing it. What you could do is a little tip here. You could even pre-drill that hole, so you could rapid the tool straight into the pre-drilled hole and then mill out from there. Helixing isn't very efficient, takes a lot of time, but it's sometimes necessary. So do you feel like you know enough about roughing now to carry on with the pass? Absolutely, I think so. I think my one question would be, would there be any times we wouldn't want to use an adaptive clearing strategy for roughing? Okay, um, maybe the uh, material, maybe you haven't got a tool with the right flute length and you need to go back to sort of an inserted style tool, you know, or you, know, you can even look at tools like this with inserts all the way up the shank. You might then use a pocket style strategy where you go. Adaptive also can struggle. If you've got like a long, narrow slot, it's going to try and do that in loads of little cuts. That can be bad for your machine, excess wear on the ball screw. So I wouldn't use an adaptive roughing strategy if I had a load of slots that were that slightly bigger than the diameter of the tool, because it's not going to be the best one. There you're better off doing like a ramping strategy going down um, into the slot then. Got it, sounds good. Is there anything left to do for this part? Um, for the roughing, we're pretty sorted. Fantastic. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and click to watch the next video.